my daily declarations. We're having something today called a uh, car rally slash scavenger hunt. And, you know, before you can do that, you've got to have some directions. Uh, and Jan has, where are you, Jan? Over here, yeah, where you always are. Uh, you put together directions, haven't you? And she wouldn't give them to me, and I tried to find them early. <laughs> you know, I thought maybe we could work some. No, she, no, she wasn't having any of that, I'll tell you. I said, well, I'll put some of it in the sermon. And she said, no, 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 not doing that. So, uh, uh, so you're going to find out together what the directions are, but you can't have a car rally without directions. And you can't get to the car rally without declaring that I'm going to do that. Declarations are important in the road of life as well as in the road on a road rally. You need directions and you need declarations to say, I'm going here, I'm doing this, I'm not doing that, I'm coming over here, and this is going to happen. I'm going to do that. We're going to get a whole bunch of directions and instructions, and uh, <clears throat> some might even finish the course. <laughs> we'll see, depending on how well those directions are, are, are written. But the same is true, folks, for our daily walk with the Lord. <laughs> They're written well, right? Okay. Okay. So what you're saying is it won't be your fault if we don't get there, right? Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, so even on the road of life, we need directions and we need declarations. I suspect that often, and I say that from personal experience, often we're giving the wrong declarations. I've got one slide, I mentioned it to you, seven dumb daily declarations, and we've all used them, and they're not God's declarations, and then I'm going to give you eight, and we're going to take the whole rest of the sermon on that, uh, eight divine declarations straight out of the Word of God, because we live by declaration. You are known by the declarations that you make. People know you by what comes out of your mouth. That's a scary thought, isn't it? <laughs> People are constantly measuring you based on what's coming out of your mouth. What are, you, are you positive? Are you negative? Are you, uh, you know, a gossip? Are you, are, do you only speak the word? When you feel like talking about somebody, do you do it on your knees? You know, where, uh, where are you in terms of the declarations that you make every day? And sometimes we make positive declarations, uh, and sometimes we make negative declarations. And negative declarations uh, literally become self-defeating for us. We say dumb things, and then we become what we say. Anita, you're not alone. <laughs> not that you've ever done anything dumb. I was just going to say one of the smart things you did was marry him. I, you know, you can pay me later. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so every day we make these daily declarations. Let me just stop for a minute. Can you think of, and I won't ask you what they are, but can you think of some daily declarations? You say it every day, and you say to yourself, I probably shouldn't be saying that. How many of you have those? All right. Yeah. The rest of you liars may now leave. Yeah. <laughs> so we, our daily declarations, they either serve us poorly because they're negative and self-defeating, or they're positive and self-fulfilling, and are, they enable us to work with God. God is at work within us. We're going to talk about that uh, today, to build his kingdom. So what are you declaring with your mouth? The first, again, I'm calling seven dumb daily declarations, and the last are eight uh, divine declarations. Spend about two minutes on this one. Seven dumb daily declarations. You recognize yourself in these, at least I do. I'm not worthy. You know, I'm not smart. <sighs> I'm not good looking. You didn't say amen. 
I know my face ain't no star, but I don't mind it. I'm behind it, so folks in front get the jar, you know. Okay. I'm not smart. I'm not important. I'm not good looking. As long as you believe you're not important to the kingdom of God, you'll sit down and do absolutely nothing. And the devil will go, way to go. Got that one. Because we've convinced them they're not important. They got nothing to do. They're just this or they're just, <clears throat> excuse me, just that. I'm not equal to others. Others are smarter. Others are better equipped. Others have degrees. Others can do this and others can do that. I have no value to anybody. You know, sometimes we hear that from our seniors because they've lived and they think that nobody loves them. I tell you what, Cora, you may have hit 100 years old, but I saw a whole bunch of people there who love you to pieces, and you are important, and you have value, whether you're 100 or 10 like my grandkids and one of my granddaughters. You are important to the kingdom of God, and you need to know that. And whether you sit in, in wheelchairs or wherever you are, you are important to God. You're important to the movement of the kingdom of God. I have no value to anybody. Dumb daily declaration. Last one, I'll never accomplish anything. I'll never accomplish anything. I, you know, I've struggled with those my whole life. Somewhere along the line, God began to say to me, Gordon, you not change your attitude. You need a checkup from the neck up. You know, you got to begin to look at your daily declarations because when you put all that together, it basically says, I'm a failure and God created a dud. You know what? God don't make no junk. Pardon the colloquialism, but God don't make no junk. God has never made a mistake in his whole existence. And that includes you. You have a purpose and a reason to be alive at this point in your life, at this point in the history of the church. You are here for a reason. And that reason and purpose comes from God. So those are dumb daily declarations. If you find yourself there, and most of us have, we visit there quite frequently. I hope you don't live there, but if you visit there, don't go there. Don't believe the lies of the enemy. Here are Eight divine daily declarations. I would encourage you, by the way, there's always notes. Uh, for those of, us, uh, those of you who are with us for the first time, there's always a set of notes. Every one of these slides, did you get one? You're going to. Here you go. <laughs> See how important y'all are? Y'all come back now, you hear? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I would encourage you to take these eight things that I'm going to share with you, put them on your mirror so that when you wake up in the morning and ladies, you put your makeup on or guys, you shave your face, you're looking at these eight daily declarations and you're understanding you are important to the kingdom of God today. It's not uh, when you finish your degree. You know, it's, it's not when... when you get that job, or you do this, or you are important to the kingdom of God today. Proverbs 18, 21 tells us, powerful, powerful passage. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Can I say it any plainer than this? You get what you say. You receive in life what you say. If you run around saying, I'm dumb, I'm stupid, I didn't, I just didn't, you know, I'll never amount to anything, you're right, you won't. Why? Because you didn't believe in what God put within you. It's not that God fails us, it's that we fail to understand what God put within us. We're going to look at eight declarations of what God put within us. But remember, what you speak is what you get. So where do you get that from? The very essence of the spiritual life teaches us that. How was all of this universe created? God spoke it into existence. Hebrews 11.1. 1. He spoke into existence the sun, the moon, the stars, the planets, the hills, the valleys, the, all of it, the birds, the trees, you. 
He spoke them into existence. We are created in the image of God. I'm one slide ahead of myself, but let me tell you, you are created in the image of God. You need to understand that just like your creator, when you speak, either life or death happens. I could go sit down now and that would be the sermon, wouldn't it? <laughs> Josh, yeah. He wasn't saying do it. All right. Number one, declaration. Here are eight declarations. I declare that I have a godly heritage. I am a child of God. I didn't come from a monkey in a banyan tree. I didn't come to craw crawl out of some primordial swamp. You know, my ancestors that weren't somehow, you know, they didn't somehow crawl out of ooze. You and I were created in the mind of God in eternity past. And then as he created us, he laid out your DNA and your genetic makeup so that you would be primed to do his will on this planet. Think about that. God doesn't waste any energy. You are a child of God. How do you know that? Well, you're a child of God by creation, number one. What does it say in Genesis 1.27? God created us in his own image. God created us in his own image. I think what's wrong with this world to begin with is that we have far too low expectations of ourselves. We don't understand we were created for excellence. There are seeds of greatness that God planted in us that if we don't ever learn that, that uh, concept, that we will miss altogether, and the world will have missed what we could have given to it. Think about that. There's a whole field of seeds of greatness planted within you. You were created in the image of God. So what does that mean? Well, let's just take the simple. God is what? The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's a trinity. You are a trinity. Scripture talks about you as being a body, soul, and spirit. The spirit man is, is that holy part where literally when you receive Christ, the Holy Spirit lives within you. And the power of God is resident in your spirit. And God doesn't want us to live under the direction of our flesh or under the direction of our, uh, of our soul, our emotions. And I know, because I've been there, that doesn't work real well. You talk about failure at times. You know, God has so designed us that the way we function best is to have his Holy Spirit living through our spirit and walking in obedience to him and putting our, uh, our flesh and our soul in order with God's word. Can't get any simpler than that, folks. We were created in the image of God. And as a trinity, and marriage is a trinity. Folks, hello. Marriage is a trinity. You have God, who is the head of the marriage. You have a husband and a wife in the perfect triangle. And that marriage will function perfectly as long as God is at the head of that triangle. Take him off the pinnacle of that triangle, and it will fall apart fast. Make sense? Okay. So, created in God's own image. We are his child by creation, but we're even more importantly, his child by salvation. When you receive Christ, you re I mean, we took communion this morning. I love our, our by the way, we have... Uh, it's not a private communion, it's an open communion, but we have so few that we have it in the other room. Uh, it is at 9 o'clock every Sunday morning, and we have communion. We usually have anywhere from 3 to 10 there, and we would invite you folks to join us right around the corner, and, and uh, it's the blue room back there. Is it? No, it's not blue anymore, is it? We paint, you painted it. shouldn't say we painted it. What's this we business? Huh? <laughs> it's now beige, but it's right there. You'll see a sign on the door that says for communion. Uh, but when you receive Christ, the Holy Spirit takes up residency in you, 
as he does, he begins to speak to you, to lead you, and to guide you in the direction that you're supposed to go. We're not out there on our, long, on our own. When I've tried to be out there as a lone ranger, I get into trouble. You know, it's not, okay, I'm saved now, I'll direct my life. Uh-uh-uh. Now I'm saved, now I will allow the Holy Spirit to direct my life because he lives in me. I am the temple of the Holy Ghost, and he lives in me, and he's living out of me. So all who are led by the Spirit of God, they are the, what? Children of God. Two Greek words in the New Testament for the word children. One is technon, and you can see the word in it, teachable. It means the little tiny learners. And then there's the word huios in the Greek, and that's what this word is here. It means the adult, mature sons and daughters of God. And why are they adult, mature? Because they're being led by the Holy Spirit. That makes them mature. Okay? <laughs> Probably most of us vacillate somewhere in between there, huh? I don't think any of us are led by the Spirit 24-7. like to tell you I was there, but... Uh, Y'all know better than that. Okay. So number one is the declaration of heritage. I am a child of God. That makes all the difference in the world when you face your day. I am a child of God. Number two, declaration of strength. I hear believers say all the time, I feel so weak. I feel weak spiritually. I feel weak physically. I, the older we get, uh, you know, the... Supposedly, the, the weaker the body gets and the less we can do. Uh, and we fixate on that. And then we sit down and do nothing. Say, I don't have the strength I used to and I can't. Do you know what? Listen to this verse, 2 Corinthians 4, 16. We do not lose heart. Grab a hold of that in your spirit. We will not lose heart. We will not give up and die and play dead because we reached whatever age or because something happens or, you know, I've talked with you constantly for the last couple of months about the fact I'm going to retire. August 1st is the date. Social Security has it. They're working on it. And, uh, you know, we're coming up to that real quick. There was a time when I first talked about retirement that I thought, oh, good. Just gonna sit down and do nothing and kind of relax and catch my breath. And I had a friend or two say that's not what it's about. You know where my head is at now? The reason I'm retiring is because it's time to refire. It's time to refire. It's time to go in some new directions and do some new things. And time to do things that I didn't have the time to do before for God, for his kingdom. I feel more fired up than I've ever felt. I'm ready to go. You ready to go with me? Thank you, Jim. <laughs> All right. So do we do not lose heart, though outwardly in our body as we get older, we may be decaying. And you say, oh, don't go there, Pastor. Well, read the rest of it, you know. But our spirit man, our inner man, where the Holy Spirit lives, is being renewed day by day by day. You're being made stronger day by day by day. You're getting more purpose for life day by day by day. You're understanding with greater clarity and with the wisdom of God day by day by day what is unfolding in your life. Wow. Wow. I don't care whether you're 7 or 70. You ought to be excited about life. Thank you, Anita. Saying amen to a preacher is like saying sick him to a dog. Okay. Declaration number three. I declare that I have endurance. I have endurance. What does that mean? I have no limits. Would you say that together with me? I have no limits. So, but pastor, you don't understand. I got this going on. Wait a minute. 
It doesn't matter what you and I say. It matters what God says. You know what he said? You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. I don't have strength. Oh, God's strength is insufficient? Hmm? I can do all things through Christ. I, there's something, uh, let me tell you, God is remapping my, my brain. Some of you are saying, that's a good thing. <laughs> He's literally remapping the dendrons and the neurons in my brain, and I'm getting excited about life, and I'm looking at new directions as well as continuing some old ones. Uh, I'm excited. Thank you, John. <laughs> because we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Not about what you've got in you. I, I, Viola, you're an amazement to me. <laughs> you think, well, yeah, I, I'm talking about you, girl. <laughs> because... Your smile can fill a room. Your smile fills a room. When she goes, mm, you know, you've been communicated with. You say, well, she has limits. Well, so do I. So do you. Except that when they're given to God, we don't have limits. He said, what it, wherever you think you were limited in, I've just given you all the power of God to work in that area in your life. You have no limits. Age is not a limit. Education is not a limit. I can't tell you the number of places and the number of things that I've done in my life where I've gotten to places in terms of achievements and accomplishments, and some of you have too. And I've had men with earned doctor's degrees, head of the graduate school of theology, look at me and say, in Oral Roberts University, how did you do that? I've been trying to figure out for six years how to do that. I said, I don't know. I just did what God told me to do. I don't really know. I can't give you a formula. I don't understand all, but I do know that God did this. God did this. Folks, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Declaration number four. Run around, we run around saying, I'm dumb, I'm wise, I, I'm not wise, I, I don't, you know, there are lots of people smarter than me. What are you saying? That's heresy. The scripture says, you have the mind of Christ. And that the wisdom of God is yours. I loved watching the... Uh, royal wedding yesterday. How many of you watched any part of the royal wedding yesterday? Look at that. Okay, yeah. And when that Episcopalian uh, priest from Chicago got up and talked about love, and he said, this world has yet to discover what can be accomplished fully through the love of God in mankind. And I thought to myself, I'm sitting there going, hey man, preach it, bro. <laughs> preach it. We haven't figured out yet that God lives within us. You say, well, I'm getting older. I know. I understand that. The body doesn't do all the things it used to. I get that. But I'll tell you what. Your spirit should be stronger than it ever was. It should be alive and on fire and listening for the voice of God to know what God wants it to do. So I declare that I am wise. I have wisdom way beyond the wisdom of man. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, God talks about the fact that the wisdom of man, that the foolishness of God, the foolishness of God is wiser than the wisdom of man. God's silliness, God's silliness is wiser than the absolute wisdom of man. You know, God, when he's telling a joke, is wiser than the wisdom of man. I have the mind of Christ. 
Now, am I telling you I always live here and I get it and I live on this plateau where all this is true 24-7 in my life? Oh, no. Those who are closest to me know that like everybody else, I struggle with these truths. But just because I struggle with them doesn't mean they're not true. The Word of God is the Word of God is the Word of God. It doesn't change. It never loses its power. Uh, the psalmist David wrote that, that uh, you know, the Word of the Lord endures forever. Forever. So 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16... We have the mind of Christ. I didn't say that. God said that. That's not my theology. That's God's word. He says, I've given you my mind. You need to know what to do in a situation. You need to know when to move, when not to move, where to go, what to do. You need direction for your life. Ask God. God for wisdom, James 1.5. If any of you lacks wisdom, and we all do in places, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and freely, and the King James Version says, and upbraideth not. It means that God won't give you a hard time and say, well, you dummy. It's about time you finally came to me. You know, you're so stupid. I wish you'd just come to me. God never does that. He never upbraids us. It literally means that God will say, oh, come on. Let me tell you what you need to know. Let me share the mind of God with you. Poof. <laughs> okay. James 1.5. Declaration of wisdom. Declaration of guidance. Well, I don't know what, what direction to take. We're going to do this car rally this afternoon. What direction do I take? I need guidance. You know? Some of you may get out your smartphones or your tom-toms and you'll program in a certain thing and it'll tell you where to go. Is that going to work or not? Not going to work. <sighs> you really hung us out to dry, didn't you? <laughs> okay. If you have the sword of the Lord, you'll be all right. Okay. So I'm under the direction of God. One of the first verses I learned uh, in my preteens days was this passage. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Many of you can quote this. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Say it with me. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not under your own understanding, but in all your ways submit to him, and he will direct you your path. He will direct your path. You need direction? You know, I love your story, folks. <laughs> they went out one day, they were here one day with, with uh, Stuart and <clears throat> saw a house and said, that, yeah, that's the house we want to buy. Put a bid on it, you've already moved into it. They were here last week helping you move in, right? <sighs> From Kentucky. Wow. And you brought every. It's all here now, isn't it? Okay, most of it's here. Okay, <laughs> your kids aren't yet, but they'll get here. Uh, anyway, welcome home. We have a saying here that says, uh, "Your first time a visitor. After that, your family." So consider yourself a day early in your family. Okay. Uh, so trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not under your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He. He, who he, who he, the Lord God Almighty, he will direct your path. You know what that word path is in the Hebrew? It's in the Septuagint Greek version of the Hebrew language. The word path there is zodiacos. Does that sound familiar? Yeah, zodiacos. You ever heard of the zodiac, the signs of the zodiac, the stars in the heavens? divided up into 12 different quadrants, and the message of the gospel of Christ is in every one of those quadrants. You have Virgo the Virgin, Mary. You have Leo the Lion, who is, who is you know, the Lion. And, and you go through all of those 12 quadrants, and each of them have the, 
uh, segments, each of those houses. They're called decans or houses. Uh, and, uh, but it says that God put them in their zodiacos. God put them in their path. Why don't the stars crash into one another? You know, because God put them in their zodiacos. He put them in their path. The stars and the planets follows, follow the path of God. They never err. And you know what? God says, you lean not unto your own understanding and all your way acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths. Submit your ways to him, and he will direct your zodiacos, your uh, path. So I declare that I have the guidance of God. I have the guidance of God. Do you? Okay. Declaration number six. I am fearless. Some days. <laughs> I'm working on this one. Amen. We're working on it. The declaration of fearlessness. I walk by faith, not by sight, not by fear. Now, that's why you put them on your mirror in the bathroom, because we struggle with them every day. And so we want to remind ourselves every day that we are to repeat these things to ourselves. We make declarations to ourselves. I declare that I am a child of God. I declare I have the wisdom of God. I declare uh, that I have the strength of God. I declare. And you declare those things in the morning when you're getting up and you're getting about your tax. Uh, you're, uh, <laughs> I just kicked it over there. Uh, uh, when you're getting about your, your path for the day. Okay. Uh, so fearless. 2 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1, uh, uh, chapter 1, verse 7. I learned this verse, really learned it, when I was a senior in Bible college about to graduate and go out into the ministry about six months before graduation, and I was having a nervous breakdown. I was working uh, 40 hours a week in a factory doing heavy manual labor. I was doing 21 credit hours a semester. Uh, and I was married and had a child that I was taking care of, you know, and had a bunch of stuff on the side that I was responsible for. I, you can guess I was trying to do it all for Jesus, you know. And what I learned was God says, would you relax and let me? He's been teaching me that his whole, my whole life, and I'm still in the process of learning it. It's a long, lifelong learning. But he gave me this verse then. God has not given us a spirit of fear. If you have fear, it didn't come from God. Guess where it came from? The enemy, Satan. Beelzebub, the arch deceiver, came from him. He paints billboards all over the inside of your mind saying, this is going to be terrible. See how bad this is going to be? Fear. This situation over here, oh, you can't handle that situation. Fear. They're only billboards. Ignore them. Tear them down, better yet. How do you tear them down? With the word of God. With the word of God. Okay. So God has not given us a spirit of fear. If you have one, didn't come from God, and it doesn't belong there. Number two, he's given us a, a, a spirit of power. 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 So I don't know if I've got what it takes to... You got it. Trust me. You have the power of God living within you. Well, how, yeah, but how, how strong is that power? Well... In the Greek, it's the word dunamis from which we get dynamite. God says, I'll blow that situation apart and let you put it back together. You have the power of God within you. Do you really have what it takes to pastor this church, Josh? You better believe you do. And don't let the devil tell you otherwise. Amen. And don't let anybody else tell you otherwise. Spirit of power, a spirit of love, all the power in the world... You know, power corrupts, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. We've heard that a billion times. 
give somebody power, and the first thing they do is corrupt it. God says, wait a minute. You put power together with love, and then it's like a sandwich. Love is in the middle. You've got power on one side of the sandwich, and you've got a sound, disciplined mind on the other side of the sandwich. A sound, disciplined mind. At four in the morning, a pastor gave me that verse when I thought I was literally losing it. Came to the house. We're living on, on, uh, on campus in an on-campus apartment. And I thought, I'm, I'm not going to make it to graduation. I'm losing my mind. And he whipped out his sword and read to me Second Timothy 4 in the morning. That's, that's a pastor. That's a dedication. You know? And he read me this verse. And God has given us a sound or disciplined mind. If you don't like what your mind is saying, speak to it. Talk to it. Let your spirit instruct your mind. Let the Holy Spirit within your spirit say, mind, straighten up. David did that all the time. You read the Psalms. Now, what we're talking about is self-talk. I've talked with you about self-talk hundreds of times. Self-talk is what goes on in your mind. And believe it or not, scientists have measured, I don't know how, but they measured. And what you say in your mind goes a hundred times faster than what you can say with your mouth. And so your mouth, I'm trying to say the word of God, and I'm trying to stand, I'm trying to be strong, and, I'm trying, and my brain is saying, you're an idiot. You'll never get anywhere. You can't do that. You're too young. You're too old. You're too... And the devil's just feeding that. A hundred times more words in your brain. So what do you say to your brain? You do what David did. David spoke to himself. He says... O oh my soul, why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God. He talks to himself. See, it's okay if you talk to yourself, as long as you talk with scriptures. So that's the passage in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 7. We walk and live by what? Faith. By faith. Not faith in what I can do. Faith in what God who lives within me can do. I'm excited. I'm doing more dreaming today than I've ever done in my life today. And I don't mean head on the pillow and having weird dreams. I mean I'm dreaming and getting visions from God about what I expect to do in the next year or two or three. I'm not going to lie down and play dead for anybody. And you know what else I've done? Is position those around me who will stand in agreement with me. If you've got people saying, well, you can't do that, then they don't belong in your circle. Amen? You say, thank you very much. I appreciate your opinion. Then you walk away and say, not true, because I've got the power of God within me. I can do this. I can do this. So we live by faith. Get those around you who support the visions and dreams that God has placed within your heart. Otherwise, you're going to be fighting a battle all the time. Next to the last, declaration. Declaration of victory. Of victory. I am an overcomer. Say that with me. I am an overcomer. I'm an overcomer. Now, I know... Just like you, there are days when you feel like you've been overcome. Life just hits you. That's life. You pick yourself up, you dust yourself off, and you move forward, and you say, I'm an overcomer. We're going to get beyond this. Got surgery coming up, Diane? You're going to get beyond this. You're an overcomer. You're going to live in the victory that God gives to you in your body, and that pain's going to stop in the name of Jesus. That pain is going to stop. You can't live in pain. Take this message home for Tim. Bless his heart. I, I mean, I've watched people in pain all my life. I never judge people in pain. You have no clue what they're going through. So it's not about judging them. It's about coming alongside of them, like the Greek word for paracl for the Holy Spirit is parakletos, paraclete. And 
putting your arm around them and walking with them and encouraging them to get to that spot. I'm an overcomer. John 16, 33. Jesus was talking to the disciples. He says, on this earth, you will have many trials and sorrows. Many trials and sorrows. But take heart. I have overcome the world. Who lives in you? And what is he? The overcomer. And if you live and walk in Christ, who are you? An overcomer. An overcomer. Praise the Lord. Yep. Okay, number eight. I declare that I have a destiny, and my destiny is not to fall apart. My destiny is not to, uh, to somehow get to a certain age, retire, and somehow survive. My destiny is to thrive. My destiny is that I will reign and rule with Christ forever. 2 Timothy chapter 2. It says, if we endure, we will also what? Reign with him. We will reign with him. You go, the whole book of Revelation is about the church reigning with Christ. First, he removes us through the rapture. He takes us up into glory. We have seven glorious uh, years in heaven. Those are earth years. And during that time, we have uh, you know, the marriage supper of the Lamb. You're going to get to another marriage, another wedding, the marriage supper of the Lamb. And if we endure, if we don't give up, if we don't lay down and play dead, you know what? You will reign with him. All right. That's, uh, we need to live up to God's expectations and stop living down to our basest fears. Can I repeat that? We need to start living up to God's expectations and stop living down to our basest fears. God gave me that this morning. I was praying over the message and God said, write this down. I wrote it down. Start living up to the expectations of God and stop living down to the basest fears that the enemy throws at you. You'll be amazed at what you can accomplish.